here is the game that was unjustly forgotten in a, by the chess history. Game was played between Nigel Short and Jan Thiemann. Let me tell you a few words about Nigel Short. I was his opponent's second in a world championship match. I studied, uh, okay, my prodigy was the um, uh, very famous Gata Kamsky. I studied Nigel Short very carefully. I started it, I, st I studied his weak and strong points and I came to conclusion that he is maybe one of the best players and the strongest players with initiative that ever played this game. He is extremely dangerous when he owns space, when he has space advantage or initiative. That's why in his game, in his match against Garry Kasparov, Garry Kasparov tried to not give him any kind of initiative and he succeeded. That's why he won his match convincingly. But here is the game that I want to go through that Jan Timan was not careful enough and got very passive position in the opening. And let me see why, let me show you why it's one of my most all-time most favorites and why I like this game very, very much. E4, knight f6, Alekhine defense, e5, knight d5, d4, d6, knight f3, g6. It's one of the variations of Alekhine. Bishop c4, knight b6, bishop b3, bishop g7, and here are several moves white has. One of the moves, knight g5, I used to play this move, and um, it has uh, interesting possibilities. So, but game, the move that played by short is also one of the possible, possible continuations in this position. Queen e2, you see black cannot play bishop g4 because bishop takes f7, king takes f7, knight g5 check, followed by queen takes g4. So what happened in this position, uh, black played knight c6, white castled, again black cannot play bishop g4 for the same reason, castle. And now white played h3. That's a very strong move and the correct move because now bishop g4 may be a problem for white because what white wants to do to maintain their pawn on e5, it's a very strong pawn because it deprives black from to some uh, space in the center. And in order to keep this pawn on e5 alive, white must stop bishop g4 because bishop g4 will attack the d4 pawn as well as e5 pawn. You see, they're putting more pressure on e5 by pinning white's knight. So h3 is a strong move. Black plays a5. Well, a4 they want, and white plays a4. d takes e, and d takes e, and knight d4. Now, we know the rule that if you have space disadvantage, try to take some minor pieces of the board. So that's what Timon does. Knight d4, knight takes d4, queen takes d4. Now e5 pawn is hanging. Rookie one is the only way to defend it. And after uh, rookie one, e6, knight to d2. White is moving knight to f3, which will be very well placed, and also protecting the pawn on e5. After knight to d2, black goes knight d5 and knight f3, and queen to c5.
Now, knight on d5 stands well because it's difficult for white to kick this knight out of d5 because after c4, they're going to have a strong outpost on the b4. White goes queen e4, and you can tell that it's black has to be real careful or white can develop very strong attack after queen h4 followed by bishop h6. So after queen e4, black plays queen b4, trying to exchange queens, and white plays bishop c4. Obviously, white does not want to exchange queens because you have space advantage, you have to continue uh, uh, squeezing black and possibly organizing some strong attack on the king side. So you cannot go c4 and you don't want to come back with a queen. So bishop c4 is a good move. That's what was played. After bishop c4, knight b6 and the b3. Now this is a sign, this maneuver, a sign of a very strong player. Now white gives up a bishop for a knight, gives up a two bishop advantage to black and also messes up its own pawn structure. But what do they get instead? They give black's bad bishop on c8 and they get potential of instant attack and a very strong attack on a king side. Also, at the same time, the, there is a threat of bishop a3, winning exchange, winning rook on f8. Black goes rook e8, and in this position, after rook e8, um, uh, white has clear plan. They have to get dark squares um, on the uh, king side. So move is rook to d1, and after queen c5, queen to h4. Black goes b6, they have to develop the bishop on b7, because this bishop does not have any other square to be developed at. Bishop d7, bishop c6 is another option, but then bishop gets the same diagonal in taking the c6 square away from black's queen. So b6 is the normal logical move. Bishop e3, queen c6, and now bishop h6. That's another very, very strong maneuver. Why not bishop h6 right away? Because after bishop h6, black can play queen f8, defending the dark squares. After bishop a e3, black had to play queen f8 anyway, but they want queen c6. But now white goes bishop h6. Now after bishop h6, we can tell there are some immediate threats, kind of knight g5 and so on. And after bishop h6, black has to be very, very careful. Black played bishop h8, so they don't want white to exchange dark square bishop and penetrate with the queen f6 and possibly rook d4 later on. So obviously black does not want to exchange the bishops. Uh, after bishop h6 and bishop h8, rook d8, very strong move. Obviously, rook takes d8 is not possible because queen takes with a checkmate. Um, after rook d8, bishop b7 must be played and rook a to d1. And now it's obvious that black is in serious trouble. The threat is queen to e7. Queen to e7 uh, will put black in totally hopeless position, then threatening rook to d7, and you see the f7 uh, square is in b big trouble. So bishop g7, this move almost has to be played by the black. 
Now white wants to play rook to d7. You see, by playing rook d8, white got full control on d file, and now they want to keep both rooks alive. They don't want to exchange pieces. Rook d7, and bishop h6 is not good here, because after queen takes h6, rook takes f7 is a threat. And interestingly enough, black cannot even play queen e4 in this position. It looks like queen e4 exchanges queens, which is a good thing for black. But queen e4 loses to rook takes f7, and black can resign immediately. Because on king takes f7, knight g5 check, winning black's queen. And on the rook queen takes h4, rook takes g7 check and uh, uh, white takes the black's queen next move and uh, has an extra piece. So in this position, black has no choice but to play rook f8. So this position is, in my opinion, is totally lost. What does white have? White has very strong rooks on d file they have absolutely squeezed black's king side, and they have domination of all pieces. There should be decisive continuation. White exchanged black's bishop, uh, well, uh, dark square bishops, Bla bishop takes g7, and rook to d4. Now you see that they are thinking about possibly swinging rook to the king side. Black plays rook a to e8. There is not much to do for black. Black has no plan, no future. Queen f6 check, king g8. And here goes h4. What white wants is very obvious. h5 and h6 to checkmate black's king. And after h4, h5 is forced. And here comes most original plan and that's what games the that's what makes this game so fascinating this is you cannot see it too often what the way black white won this position black you have to notice that black is in total zugzwang the pieces cannot the, their pieces cannot move freely so what white does simply here goes king h2 in this position and after rook c8 here is the idea king h2 king simply goes to h6 and it's very difficult for white to stop black for black to stop white from mating queen g7. So after king g3, rook c to e8, and you see king f4. Position is absolutely hopeless for black. They cannot do anything. They, ha they have to be witnessing king coming to h6 and mating black's king. Bishop c8. King g5, and uh, in this position, uh, black simply resigned because on bishop takes d7, king h6. You, I don't remember when I have seen before, if I have seen any game like this ever played in a history. That's what makes this game very original, very well played uh, by white. I must admit that maybe only negative thing about this game, that black's resistance wasn't on a very high level. But it was played between uh, two very strong grand super grandmasters in a very strong tournament. And to make the plan to, to win the game where you go from king to g1, h2, g3, f4, g5, and h6, and checkmate 
your opponent's king is very, very fascinating. Well, I got to admit that I have not seen too many of those games. I have not seen any of games like this. That's why it's one of my all-time favorite games in chess.